about again the farming and the fiberglass you got the boxes so we're farming now we got fiberglass boxes you know water inside we're literally watering from the ground up so somebody says at some point the word boat comes up somewhere well how we got to the boat was um i built that first part mm -hmm. and uh, uh a wooden plug mm -hmm. and uh, and instead of building a, instead of building a, you know, I built it reverse mm -hmm. and was going to try to pull off of the parts off of the plug. Right. And I, so I waxed that up and uh, not really knowing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I stuck the part. Gotcha. And I mean, I stuck it. It's so a, just to clarify for folks who don't know what that means, can you kind of break that down just a so little bit? So you, you've got this part and, you, and you're using it as a mold. Mm hmm so you have a wooden part that you, you yep right and you've waxed it really good right with car wax carnauba wax sure and now you start laying fiberglass on it right and, and and then taking resin and rolling out the fiberglass to make a fiberglass part sure now the just again just getting into a little minutia for folks who might not know so then you've got the the basically the overlap right. of what comes down and you're rolling it down so it's snug against there. Yep. The part underneath is the mold yep. right? and the part on top yep. is the fiberglass part. In our cases, most of the time, it's the hole, the lid, the, the console. So think okay, of right? a, a cake pan. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got a cake pan, that's mm -hmm. your mold, mm -hmm. and you make your cake in there. And, yeah. and the first thing you do with a cake is you put butter on the pan. Well, the first thing we put on the boat is a gel coat, the right, outside paint. Right. And you build your boat or you build your cake and then you pop it out of your mold. Right. So when you say you got stuck, the wedding cake is stuck it's inside stuck. And of the pan. My mom was a caterer and yeah. there was uh, rarely times where she used four letter explicitness, but that happened a lot when the cake was stuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it stuck to the point that to get the part off, ended up tearing the part up and the mold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had... Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I had a uh, waste... Now, is there a word for that in yeah. the industry? The word for that when... When the, it's stuck, it's stuck. When it, well, when it stucks and it destroys the mold. Is there... Yeah. You, uh, you can't say it on... on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Okay. But, uh, yeah. so, you know, here I was, had to start over. And then uh, I thought, you know, there's this little company in town that's building some boats. Mm -hmm. And it's called Carolina Skiff. So I'll go up there and see if they'll help me out. Mm -hmm. And so I go up there and I talk to uh, Terry Stark, who's the founder. And Terry and I became good friends after that. Um, and his comment to me was, he came out and spoke to me, and he says, no, 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 no. We, we don't have time to do this. Um, basically what we tell people now. Sure. I, I couldn't charge you enough mm -hmm. to be worth my time. And I said, okay, well, um, yeah, I read my book. Wait a minute, I got to back up. You got to back up. So... Um, I got to clarify what you just said. So when people come in our office, yeah. <laughs> we can randomly get people that will show up from time to time. And the folks that show up there have the brilliant idea that they want to build their own hats, their own lid, their own back deck. And it's kind of like going into the dentist office and going, is there anybody here who's got a few minutes to show me how to pull a tooth or two? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. setting that stage. Thing. Setting that stage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, he tells me now there's... There's some guys that work for me, and I fired them. Mm -hmm. And they're over here in this little building, um, and they're trying to build boats. And he says, and they're not having much success at it. Um, he said, now they don't have any money, but they have the time to build these parts for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, he warned me, he said, be cautious now, because like I said, these guys don't have any money. Right. Um, and they didn't. And they built the mold, and we started building parts, and then they needed more money. Sure. And now we're in the project. Mm -hmm. And we got people at the farm working, and they're needing these parts. So now you keep going, you go, and sure. you get all the parts built. You get done, you realize, okay, you know, me and you are upside down on our money. Yeah. And don't let them get ahead of you. Don't let them get ahead of you. Yeah. I mean, I let them get ahead That's of you. That's the old me. builder. Yeah. That's that, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I was looking at, you know, what's that? Well, that's a boat mold. Well, what's it take to build a boat? Well, we, we, you know, we got to buy some material. Okay, well, we can buy some material. Um, so we built a boat. And I was going, okay, that's kind of neat. Yeah, I like that. Um, and sold it. Okay. And, uh, wait, 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 wait. 
How much? Do you remember how much sold it for? It was like thirty five hundred dollars. It's like that. But now wait a minute, because I got to ask. Because I remember, you know, like those those first bigger transactions in my professional career. So what was your thinking when you got the thirty five hundred dollars? Boy, if we could do five hundred of these, <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't an alien. It seems yeah. to be the common denominator. Yeah, you know, that's the most amount of money that anyone could ever give you for anything, and yeah. you just don't see anything but the check at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see the yeah. multiples and yeah, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Looks like a straightforward. And you remember the the boats back then. This is like in ninety three. Yeah. So I mean, it's a hull, it's a deck, it's got you know. A steering wheel with one cable. Mm. It's got a little chair that you literally took out of a box and screwed it down. Mm. A little windshield. I mean, it was. Yeah. You know, the, the hardware kit. All the hardware in the boat probably fit in a cooler. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so they're very very simple. Um, that kind of went on for a little bit to the point we realized, okay, we we you know I and Dad was involved a little bit. It says, you know, we probably own this thing now. Yeah. Now, this is our business. Sure. Uh, Y'all work for us. Yeah. And the, the name of the company was Sundance Boats. So, backing up just a, do you remember the first person that bought it? Do you remember the first buyer? It was a guy here in town. I've okay. seen the boat before. Yeah. I've seen it around. It's still yeah. around. Yeah. It was a little uh, runabout. Yeah. It had this little simple black aluminum, uh, you know, it had a little square windshield, square windshield, the two little triangles on the side. Yeah. Um, How, what was the footage, you think? Fifteen. Fifteen. 15 feet. Yep. Um, I was told later on that that first mold, uh, the guy that was kind of supposedly running this operation, had bought it from Vic Ruth, who was uh, Bubba Ruth's dad. Okay. And uh, he had had a company called Sunbird. Oh, yeah, okay. And yeah. it was a old mold model, you know, like we sell old molds. Sure. You know, not building the 15 anymore. Somebody buys the mold, and now they're going to build the 15. Mm -hmm. um, so went out and ran the boat and didn't run very well. Now, when like, you say didn't run very well, it, just, just, so, just in case there's somebody who's... I, I couldn't get the bow up. Right, okay. Because okay. I remember when, you know, first, you know, totally, aside from a couple of tillers or whatnot, I'd get into a boat, and or you guys would... You know, on the on the engineering and the creator side, the building side, you guys would see photographs of boats or videos of boats running, and you could immediately see something's wrong. Right. Whereas most people, ninety nine percent of the population, cannot, cannot. see that. So um, okay, one, so bow, no bow lift. So no bow it's, lift, it's, and uh, so it makes it heavy and hard to turn. Makes it heavy, hard to turn. Okay. Makes heavy steering, and uh, so I'm looking at the boat. And I'm looking at the transom, and I'm like, there's not enough rake on the transom. Mm. So I call one of the guys at the engine company, and I say, uh, you know, what should the rake be on the transom? And he said, 15 degrees. Right. Well, I go over there, and it's 12. Uh, Asking, I says, this was 12. Oh, well, that's a runabout hull. It goes with, it's made for use with an I.O. Gotcha. I know, well, we've got to build a new mold. We gotta change the rake on that. And since we're gonna change the rake on that, we're gonna change this. We're gonna put some lifting strakes on it. Sure. We're gonna this, that, and the other. Because by this time, you I've start got a whole library of books I'm reading. You start researching. Yeah. I start researching. Yeah. Now you're now you're reading boat building magazines and yep. start. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's uh. I've got every issue of Boat Builder magazine ever issued. Yeah. yeah. And we're on issue what two seventy seven yeah. now or something. Yeah. Um, and. They're not, you're, you're not paid to say that, by the way. No, no. no. <laughs> it was so like, everybody knows that. But yeah, and, you, know, you buy the book. But maybe you should be. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I call Nigel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, then you look at it and uh, you go, okay, how thick is this fiberglass supposed to be? Well, that's called scantlings. Well, has anybody done the numbers? Mm -hmm. Well, no. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do the numbers. Let's do the math. Yeah. And so you start teaching yourself that math. Um, Anyway, we completely changed that boat, you know, and it turns, it actually became the 17 okay. that we built from then up until just um, a few years ago. Yeah, and that's the, um, so. And so that hull is basically my hull now. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, it went from one straight to three, mm -hmm. you know, went some nice uh, uh, lifting chines, 15 degree transom, um, a little bit more stem. Um, and just, so when you 
go from that first mold to that next plug to that, you know, that we're getting to research now. Yeah. We're, we're getting to composite research now. Yeah. So as we're, you know, kind of digging through that and we're starting to figure things out in terms of, you know, sounds like a lot of learning. So how many years would you say um, it took before you kind of felt sure-footed, like, I, I think we know what we're doing? Because I had heard you say oh, many times, you know, you look at old brochures and you look back and perspective is something we lack in every stage of our life. Yeah. So when you get to where you are and you look back and you look at the first two or three years you're doing something, you're like, I had no idea what I was oh, doing. Oh, man, it was just, yeah. you know, we were, you know, working like Trojans. Sure. Um, reading everything we get our hands on. Making, you know. No like, internet then, by the way. No internet. No Google. Yeah. No Google. No, uh, no computers. Everything is longhand. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I, I like to say it says, uh, you know, I learned by mis my mistakes. Sure, and I've made every single mistake you can make. Yeah, you know, yeah, they call that success, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And just when something would happen, something would go wrong, you call in the experts. You know, what is wrong with this process? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. like a who, not how. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. You know, here's what you did wrong. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You know, here's how you improve it. Um, so, you know, ninety three to ninety seven was a real struggling time mm -hmm. um learned a lot factory burned down in 97 yeah i was gonna I was, september 12th 1997 right. it was on a friday um factory was in waycross it was in waycross uh the local football team had just kicked off at the high school in the mm -hmm. stadium there and uh you look to the west there's this beautiful orange setting sun and a huge black column of smoke going yeah. up you know, I had employees at the football game. Sure. So we all come flying in from all over. The place is fully engulfed. You know, a boat plant only takes about three hours to burn itself completely yeah. out and lay down. Yeah. And I mean, it's hot enough that it just lays down. Yeah, there's down. a lot of fun, friendly stuff in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. It's, uh, there was some nice explosions. There's Dave Travis. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call him back in a minute. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, the foam cylinders blew. Yeah. Um, and rained uh, the metal rings down onto the, my neighbor's factory. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Knocked holes in the roof. But anyway, we spent a year and a half rebuilding and had to rebuild all the molds. And we built every single one of them out of wood. And uh, that's when I really got good at, you know, standing up the stations, doing mm -hmm. the plank work. Right. And planking out wood boats and then pulling molds off of them. Gotcha, yeah. And, you know, we did that first one, and it was like, okay. We're starting to get it, yeah. I, I, it's, it's clicking. We're not making yeah. mistakes. It's yeah. coming together, you know. Yeah. Uh, then your new mistakes are like, uh, you know, transportation problems and, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So everything else, yeah. That's why I'm so crazy about if I go out there and see a strap, I cut it in half if it's got a fray on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hey, well, why'd you cut my strap in half? It had a fray on it. Yeah, because I've left a load of boats on the road. <laughs> I've, I've left a load of boats yeah, yeah. on one. I've drug yeah. one down 84. Yeah. You know. Um, so go from, you know, those first few models and the, you know, the, the, the sure footing starts to come in. And I think we're on year, what, 28 now? 29? 28. Mm -hmm. I think we're yeah. on 28. So you're 28 now. Um, it's getting to be around 1999 time period. I think we're getting really, um, really good at building a shallow water skiff. Yeah. Um, you know, at that point, some of them still had the bench seats and some of them still had the tiller handles. And yep. um, who was the customer then? The buyer. I mean, obviously the dealers were. Right. We didn't have never really done any direct retail, but who was the uh, end buyer then? You know, that would be your. Uh it was a saltwater boat. It's typically your little family or a couple that's, uh, you know, they're meat fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're taking the order that Grandma said, hey, yeah. it's time to go get two trout and a, and right. a box of crabs because yeah. that's what I want to have for dinner. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, uh, you know, they, they really didn't get used much as a, what I'd call a sandbar boat, take mm -hmm. the family to the sandbar. Yeah, it was, was uti very utilitarian. Very, very yeah. utilitarian. Uh, it was a work boat. SUV. Yep. Is it where, yeah. Yeah. A lot of boats end up as work boats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so you'd, and you get nice orders from, you know, the guys doing bridges. Yeah. Well, they got to have a safety boat beside every place that there's a guy. So yeah. they need a bunch of inexpensive boats that they literally don't want anything in it. They want a gas tank, a bench seat, and a tiller handle 
-hmm. and that's the safety boat. Sure. And it's tied off. And you know, when those guys would order, they'd say, yeah, we need 20. Right. And you're um, like, yes, let's do it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, so a lot of that, a lot of the power companies, when they got the, uh, you know, they need all these little boats mm -hmm. to get up there and service the poles that go across from like, you know, sure. beside the causeway to St. Simon sure, yeah. or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's basically what it was. Um, and, and that's where the kind of the company started kind of diverging mm -hmm. or I say dad and I began converging. Sure. That's where he wanted to be. Right. That was a space he really liked and he was comfortable. He's at. very familiar with that. I'm assuming. very familiar. Yeah. That was his comfort level. Sure. That's yeah. where he wanted to be. Um, and how old was he at that time? You think? Well, let's see if it was a 2000, uh, I would have been 47. He would have been 68. And wait, back, is that right? Tw uh, get my days right. <laughs> get my yeah. years right. You're good at geometry. That basic stuff is rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got you. I mean, yeah. So uh, we were diverging. I was wanting to build the uh, V bottom boats. Sure. And I want to build center consoles. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of our last little project together was the NX series. Got you. Which was kind of a hybrid. It's sort of a skiff style boat, but it's also a center console configuration. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, we went kind of went our separate ways. Okay, so backing up to, let's say we're in the Blackshear facility, the, yep. the fire, we moved to the Blackshear facility, we're building boats there, and before you kind of do that cross in the road, where do you think the pricing was at that point? What do you, oh, well, that, that like all dressed out, you know, if you got a guy who ordered, you know, 90% of the options, where do you think we were at? Yeah, it was like, uh, 12, nine. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, uh, you know, the Cadillac of, yeah. of yeah. the Sundance. Of the, yeah. the, so, um, and, I'm, and I'm not bringing this up to, you know, kind of get any sore spots with anybody. So where did the slogan, the better skiff, come from? The, uh, well, you, you know, you're trying to come up with a, a yeah, slogan. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, in the skiff business, there's basically two competitors. There was Carolina Skiff and us. Right. There was some other little of smaller companies, but they were regional. Mm -hmm. Well, their slogan was uh, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And we always kind of, you know, nudge on them. Yeah. We're a better skiff. We make yeah. a better boat. And so, yeah, the yeah. better skiff. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, how do you think that was received? <laughs> <laughs> it got under Terry's skin. <laughs> but by then, Terry was gone. Right. He was out of there. He was yeah. out of Carolina skiff. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, his moving overseas, so most of his worldly possessions in the United States were actually stored at the farm. Gotcha. He he called me up and said, "Man, I can I got to have a place to store this. Yeah. So I can store it at the farm now, for you." And that's some perspective that I think a lot of people don't understand about the marine industry is how actually small it is. It's incredibly small in terms of the actual players. Yeah. You know, if you go to somewhere like BoatTrader.com <coughs> and you pull in, you know, a list of manufacturers, there's 2,800 manufacturers on there, but there's really only about 10 or 12, maybe 16 that are doing, you know, 80, 90 percent of yeah. all the building. Yeah. Um, you know, in saltwater boats, uh, the top 20 build 82 percent. Right. And then taking that perspective again and just kind of going back to tech, and we talked about this before, but, you know, there is um, there is no uh, IP sharing, you know, in the tech world, there is no, right. um, you know, there's there's no handshaking with your with your frenemies. That doesn't work. And uh, one of the things that was so unique to me about the industry was that um, um, I hate to use the word incestuous, but that's really what it was. I mean, you had folks who were working with multiple companies, consulting for multiple companies. So from the tech world, it's a it's a whole new banana. I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't exist. So what do you think that is? You know, I think it's a it's a little bit of camaraderie because we're in a tough business. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a big business, so we got to kind of stick together a little bit. Right. Um, it, it does remind me of, uh, you know, like, say, the real estate business. Sure. Um, we're all competitors in real estate. Mm -hmm. All the agents are fighting for clients. Listings. And, and, listings. And, and, yeah. that, and I showed them that first and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yet every month everybody gets together at the realtor's meeting and, you know, 
and looks back uphill and says, you know, this is the things we need to succeed, continue. Yeah. And he used a really good expression one time that um, I've actually, you know, kind of explained to folks later, which is, you know, you get 10 or 12 folks, CEOs all out playing golf. Yep. Um, you you want to win the game, but you don't want to make it so the other guy can't play. Yeah. And that was a really alien concept to me coming from right. you know, the tech world. So I think that's important that, you know, people understand that, um, that that mindset and it probably now I don't know you would know more so than me. Do you think that follows through to say uh, RV? I don't know. I, I, yeah. yeah, I was suspecting the RV world. Yeah, the the uh, yeah. the, yeah. the CEO. It's interesting. Are, you know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. just it's a uh, it's from you know. Um, yeah, part of it too is like for the boat builders, we get together as a group primarily at an engine meeting. Yeah. So Yamaha or Mercury, somebody's bringing us all in. Mm -hmm. Um, we're all in a hotel together. Yeah. We all go have, you're gonna, a, have you, a drink together. You're going to see the guy or the gal that you don't agree with in the elevator, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, sure. have, we eat together. We break bread together. Mm -hmm. um, so you just become friends. Yeah. And, uh, and then you start, Or at least colleagues. Yeah, colleagues. Yeah. And, you know, you start sharing stories. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when, when Dave Wallace went to work for Scout. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Louisiana, state of Louisiana, come up with this new process, and you had to fill out all these applications, and it was real onerous. And Dave Wallace was like, "I'm not going to do that." Yeah. And I said, "Let me tell you a story, Dave, about my dealings with the state of Louisiana." I tell my story, and what they did to me. And I said, "So, I recommend that you go ahead and do what they're saying." And mm -hmm. Steve was going like, "You better, Dave, because I, I do know how yeah. Louisiana works." Um, and uh, he did do it, um, but you know, yeah. And to this day, me and Dave, are, I mean, I talk to Dave probably every other month. And so backing that out just to something simple that people can kind of conceptualize. So the golf game, you know, hey guys, um, you know, we're all playing, and today it's you and I playing, and next week it's a couple other guys. Hey guys, we saw a crocodile or an alligator. We saw an alligator and a whole bunch of uh, hornets, you know, on yeah. turn two. And it's just a strange, strange right. thing to, to have so much cooperation. Well, well like in the pandemic, um, you know, we're all calling each other. Yeah. Um, what are you doing? Are you going to shut down? Yeah. You know, uh, are you going to make them get vaccinated? You know, um, hey, you need to go get that PPP. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if yeah. you qualify for that, brother, you need yeah. to sign up. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. We were all talking to each other about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're not talking about trade secrets. Sure. We're all talking about how to stay in business. Yeah. So looking back on the early years, kind of progressing to where it is now, and then understanding that you've, in some ways, almost have... Well, a, you know there's no trade secrets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, call Tommy and say... Sure. Yes, yes, absolutely. We want to look at this computer and you, when you say When you say Tommy, you mean sports and Okay, right, yeah. And uh, he says, yeah, send your guys. It was unbelievable to me that I, I, I just, you know. Yeah, I went up there. He showed you your computer system. Yeah, he walked, he walked us in the front door, and he assigned us a guy, and we were there for six hours, and we walked around, and he showed us walked everything the whole we wanted plan. to see and answered every question. And, then, you know, yeah. uh, you, I wonder if the, uh, anybody who's listening to this, you know, who's ever come from other industries, if you try to do that, if you work for Facebook and you want to walk in Apple and do that, that ain't working. That's not how it's going it's down. Not happen, right? yeah. And, you know, maybe that's changed. But, uh, and it but, probably doesn't happen between Ford and GM. Yeah, yeah. It's just really, 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 you know, it's interesting. It's, 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 a, strange, um, it's a strange community. And at the same time, it's, weird. it's almost like a strange dysfunctional family. Well, you know, when, you know? when I was first starting and I had so many questions, and so I'd call these guys, and I'd like, can I come see your factory? I'm trying to design a factory. Can I right. come see yours? You know, what would you do? What would you do different? That's where you, you uh, that phrase I've got is, uh, you can make it longer, but you can't make it wider and you can't make it taller. Right. So when you're laying out a building, it better be as wide and as tall as you're going to need. Yeah. You can always add on on either end. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, all the guys would come up and give you a tour of the plant and yeah. you know that's what again that's going back yeah. to Tommy that's when he had sports uh C pro yeah and he was like he told me make it as wide as you can yeah however wide your property is that's as wide as you want it because it is you can't make it no wider mm -hmm. um and then later on as we had our plant the other young people would call up and hey, I'm, well I'm, that's interesting to say cause and so, cause, so we'd come we'd show them around yeah because that's where I was my mind went to so if you you know if you had to write one thank you for the person who's given you the most amount of, you know, 
brotherly love and guidance and you know know-how and experience of hey don't learn this lesson the hard way you can learn from somebody and you're using a concept that uh, a lot of people are tr struggling with now called who not how yeah so who was the person that if like i said if wally bell's got to start writing the most important you know thank you card to somebody in the industry today who would that be there's several um on the boat builder friend side mm -hmm. it's it's between tommy at sportsman or uh, buck peck okay and buck and buck is with who uh, chaparral okay chaparral Robalo. and uh um i mean in the early days it was i mean every probably every eight months I would call Buck up can I come over right and drive over sit in the golf cart with him we'd drive through the plant and whatever I was curious about you know a yeah. grinding booth a new piece of equipment mm -hmm. whatever he'd give me the full tour yeah and uh, but then he would show me what I was asking questions about mm -hmm. uh, loading dock bridge crane yeah, what you don't know. What I mean, you don't know. You don't know. I mean, I've never bought a bridge crane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things. You you know, some of those some of these problems. You know, it's it's kind of like the discussion of you know, ooh, we should bring chip manufacturing back to the United States. Well, yeah, it sounds good. You know. Yeah. Um, and you know, you you know, there's a, there's a lot more to that than just saying, ooh, yeah, let's go. You know, right. it's, it's more than money, and it's it goes back to what we're saying, which is, it's about what you can build, not what you can buy. And yeah, of course, there's money's going to buy things in there, but. It's really neat to me that, you know, the, the, the mentality and the mindset that, that kind of gets exchanged in that. So, um, and then there's, you know, there's some vendors that were, um, a lot of our vendors come in from being builders. Right. Or, or, or component builders. Or they're going out. I've noticed it goes back both ways. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So like Chris Bile. Yeah. yeah, the vendor is yeah. a builder who became a vendor who then turns back into a builder. Yeah, yeah. Chris Bile. He was yeah. a... Uh, uh, ran in a poultry shop. He can mm -hmm. sew. Right. You know. He probably uh, don't want anybody to know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he's the guy. You say that if you ever decide you want to sew, you're going to say, Tell me how. Yeah. What do I need? Yeah. I know I need this, I need this, I need this, you know. Right. What's my outlay and, and yep. what's yeah, yeah. the first piece? So, so with all those years and the early years and stuff, so now looking at it, you know, now we're into, you know, um, maybe mid-2000s, um, Wally and Dad have kind of um, Dad's retired. Say, Dad's retired. You know, um, he's no longer a day-to-day -day guy. Um, and uh, then now we're starting to get into the um, center console business for sure. And then of course flats boats. Um, and I think that um, I'll, I'll steal a little bit of your thunder here and explain part of that. So um, the. The concept of, you know, branding and building multiple brands mm -hmm. is, you know, very challenging for people to understand that everything comes from the same location. It's all the same farm, if you will. Right. You know, Rich Farms probably produces three other products with three other labels on it, and it just depends on where they're going. So the concept of Seaborn as a brand, which is the namesake of the family, you know, you and your dad, and then, of course, Spider, those brands were created because of the utilitarian nature of Sundance and because of the... You know, the, the, the most amount of money you could spend on a Sundance in 1999 was, as you said, maybe 12 9 Yeah. So I do recall the conversation that you and I have had, you know, and we've had many marketing conversations over the years which said, you know, people just can't seem to make that leap from the Honda or the Toyota or the, you know, to the Lexus or the Infiniti. Right. And so $30,000 for a Sundance is unbearable, you know. So right. that's why Seaborn became Seaborn. Yeah. So first Seaborn. Let's talk about it. 